This is Game Chat Born episode 138. It lurks in the Shadowbringers. I don't know. You found Game Chat with Buona. Welcome to the show. Now here's your host, Buona McCall, with all the gaming news of this week. Uh, by the way, that's me. Greetings, folks, and welcome to episode 138 of Game Chat with Buona. We had a great show lined up for you. It's been a couple weeks, but I've been busy. Uh, we had our 12-year anniversary on Twitch the... Uh, this past Wednesday, and I think the Wednesday before something else came up. Uh, oh, I think I was sick. Yeah, that was what was going on. I was sick uh, two Wednesdays ago. But we're finally able to produce another episode. It's been a couple weeks, but uh, we got four great stories to talk about. I may dig up another. We'll see. Um, so it's good to be back on Game Chat. I want to check out my other podcast, Tech Talk with Buona, and also B Rants. The last B Rants I put up was about Twitch money. And about how the earnings of Twitch casters and Twitch live streamers is just so wild. So much. It's just some huge dollar amounts. So I rant a little bit about that. I did that on the live stream. I think that was a Sunday live stream. So we got a great show lined up for you. Let's get right into Game Chat with Buona, episode 138. <laughs> And for our first story, we're going to talk about Death Stranding. I haven't talked about this very much. I think I mentioned it. I may have mentioned it when it was first released. Hideo Kojima's latest project, Death Stranding, got a release date reveal trailer released uh, today on May 29th, 2019. And we actually have a release date for it, November 8th. That's going to come a lot faster than you think. November 8th, 2019. 19. I've been given I've been given this a hard time because up until now we've been seeing some really really trippy and creepy, just weird. I know it's Hideo Kojima. That's what people say. Oh, it's Hideo Kojima. That was my problem with it. It was just like they were dismissing all this vague nonsense with oh, it's Hideo Kojima. It's going to be great. Well, we'll see. We'll see about that. So I had a big problem with that with all the hype it was getting because it was just a bunch of confusing mumbo jumbo with babies and. I was just like, what is going on? So this latest reveal trailer, I'm happy to report that they actually showed quite a bit. Uh, it's not almost nine minutes long, so it's a lot of stuff. Uh, they actually show in-game UI and things you can do and how you operate. And uh, it, it gives some context to what the problem is and a little bit about the world that's being explored. So it, it, it answered a lot of questions. And I think the conclusion I came to was that it's going to be a very, very creepy horror stealth based game with a lot of story based elements in it, which it sounds like Hideo Kojima, you know, it sounds like his style of game. You know, if you play any of the Metal Gear Solid games, it sounds like his style. The, the whole stealth story based stuff is definitely down his alley. So it looks decent. I'm not convinced, though, I want to buy it on day one. It's a lot of weirdness with the other side and tapping into babies to detect these creatures. And I don't know, some of the story elements kind of bother me. And I don't say that often with video games. It's just the, the story theme just bothers me quite a bit. Um, if it were a movie, I definitely, definitely wouldn't watch it. But there's a lot of you out there who go, oh, my God, that's so cool. There's dead people and babies and weirdness i gotta watch it see i'm the opposite that doesn't attract me uh, so i don't know death stranding looks a little bit too weird for my taste but i'm gonna be following it maybe i'll play it maybe it'll be a little bit more than what this trailer has intended it or, or this trailer has shown me and i formulated my little opinion about death stranding check it out guys the nine minute trailer release date reveal trailer i think there's some other trailers out there too uh which may be short i'm not sure I saw some titles pop up, but I don't know if they're from Hideo's uh, studio or not. PlayStation exclusive Death Stranding. Release date is November 8th, 2019. Check out the very, very weird <laughs> release date trailer. And for our next story, we're going to talk about a new game release. It lurks below from the creator David Brevik. 
he has created a game which is kind of like a dungeon crawler, side-scrolling, pixelated base game. In the vein of Terraria and Starbound, it has the same type of art style and movement systems. Uh, but at its core, if you've ever played this game, which I have, I played in the alpha and the early access, it feels very much like uh, those types of art styles and games mixed with the looting and the progression system of a Diablo-like title. So a lot of people like to call it Terraria and Diablo, but you know that's, that's a very, very high-level summary. If you actually get a chance to play this game, you'll probably see that, hey, there's, there's a little bit more to it. Um, it's a survival. This is what it's listed as on Steam, just so you can get the official word. It's a retro-styled 2D, so that's the this art style I was talking about, action-oriented survival RPG. So you can call it an action RPG. So there you go. Um, a lot has happened. I'm not going to speak too much as to the contents and the classes. It has several classes, uh, lots of survival elements, um, but they have done a lot of rebalancing in the early access, thanks to the, the wondrous support that has gotten uh, during early access, David Brevik was able to add more content than originally originally planned. Um, but some things did have to get pushed to post-release. So uh, while the game is going to be less than what he intended uh, you know, a few months ago, it is more than the original plan from what I gather from his post and updates. So <clears throat> there's multiple classes. Let me read these. There's Bard which is a melee, you wield the power of song and screaming to beat your foes in battle. There's a cleric, which is melee plus ranged. Uh, come prepare for battle with heavy armor and plenty of healing power. And then there's the enchanted, the, I'm sorry, the enchanter, which is uh, ranged. Stun and lightning, stun and lighting, I'm sorry, are the enchantress, enchanters, tools of choice. I don't know why I want to keep calling it enchantress. It's enchanter. Then there's the necromancer, which is a ranged class. You wield Wielding the skulls of the dead as undead minions marks the necromancer <clears throat> as the game's resonant pet class. And then there's the paladin, which is a melee. Dashing into combat, wielding a powerful two-handed sword or hammer makes the paladin one of the most formidable melee characters in the game. There's the rogue, which is a melee class. Slip past enemies by hiding in the shadows and then stab them in the back like a rogue. Warrior. You decide between defensive and offensive stance, both making the warrior an incredible beast in battle and defensive stances for tanks. And then you got the, the wizard, which is also a ranged class, and you harness the power of the elements through powerful area of effect tax, uh, area effect expels that make the wizard an unstoppable elemental force. There's hardcore survival, descent, hardcore descent, creative survival, a bunch of different words. That mean different game words. I was gonna say a bunch of different modes. Creative is basically what you think it is. Is you just you, you, there's no dying. You just have access to everything, um, and it's more relaxed setting. So if that's your your cup of tea, you can do that. Descent uh, has the same difficulty as survival, but no survival aspect. So anyone just interested in just thrashing the monsters and getting all the loot, there's no survival tree, no hunger, and no fatigue. Survival has all the above, but with hunger and survival tree and fatigue and other things, you have to worry about cooking food and eating food. <clears throat> and then there's hardcore. Uh, both survival and descent have a hardcore option. It doesn't change anything except you get perma death. Um, there's a lot going on in this game. There's a lot of hours potentially that you can spend. And needless to say, by me talking about it, you can figure out that I'm recommending it. It's 20 bucks. For twenty bucks, you're gonna get you're gonna get a lot of hours of of a lot of, of great entertainment. So, if the art style, the two D retros art style doesn't bother you, and you've played these types of games, and you've ever played any Diablo title with the looting and progression system of that, this game is for you. Check it out, guys. This is It Lurks Below by David Brevik. Check it out on Steam. Uh, it is twenty dollars, and you'll find the link in the show notes to check it out. All right, guys, you should definitely check out It Lurks Below. And for our next story, we're going to talk about Final Fantasy XIV. Final Fantasy XIV recently uh, put out a live letter, a producer's live letter, which has to do with their upcoming expansion, Shadowbringers, which I've been playing a quite a bit of Final Fantasy XIV on my live stream at twitch.tv slash Buona, which we stream every day except Wednesdays and Sundays from 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. Um, and I've been, I've pretty much got re-addicted to the game. I'm, I'm, I'm hooked on it. I play it almost every day, pretty much every day. And uh, there's a lot going on. So there's a lot of hype 
leading up to Shadowbringers, which is going to come out the first week of July, early access to the last week of June. And uh, today was the embargo release. Uh, the embargo was lifted on the recent media event that happened last week. So a bunch of streamers and um, uh, influencers, I guess you can call them, and media were invited to San Francisco to meet with the Final Fantasy developers and their team to get all, <laughs> excuse me, to get all the juicy bits on, um, on Shadowbringers. And today has just been an overload of information. I'm not going to cover everything because it'll be a three hour podcast. But let's just say there's a lot of good information, a lot of new good information on the two new classes, Dancer and Gunbreaker. Gunbreaker is a gun blade wielding class that is a tank. That's intriguing enough for you. And Dancer is a DPS class with a lot of buffs and dances. Some cool mechanics coming. Um, but if that was the, you know, if that was it, it would be kind of lackluster. But the, the, I think the biggest thing about this Final Fantasy update is that they're going to be revamping about four or five classes tremendously. The uh, Dragoon, the Dark Knight, uh, the Machinist. Those are three that come to mind. And the Monk are going to be revamped big time to where if you were a fan of the class based on the information that's been put out you're going to be even more of a fan and if you didn't like the class before you're probably going to love it now because there's a lot of great things coming on top of the fact that they're adding things like a trust system where you can do some of the new 5.0 content with npcs that are story driven so you know how in the past final fantasies where you get ready to do a dungeon you're talking to alpha now you're talking to all these different people and then you go into the dungeon by yourself or with other people. In the story, you go in by yourself, but you actually part it up. So this trust system seemingly is going to bring all those NPCs that were talking to you before you got to the dungeon. They're going to be probably going in the dungeon with you. Optionally, of course, because you can go with players like you do normal dungeons. So uh, Final Fantasy XI has this kind of a feature already. And Final Fantasy XIV tried to do something with something called Squadrons. Uh, which is a barrack system, which is very, very similar to WoW's garrison system. Uh, you would essentially have a base and you would recruit people and you would train them. And with the squadron system, pre, uh, pre-squadron, or I'm sorry, pre-Shadowbringers, you could take them into the dungeons with you to do the dungeons, to level them up and to, you know, level you, level you up to get XP. But it was kind of a... Uh, now, I wouldn't call it a failed feature, but the AI, the AI wasn't all that smart. What this trust system in Shadowbringers is hoping to bring is a smarter way of doing this. Based on their early, uh, their early impressions from these influencers and the videos they've shown, everyone has agreed that the AI is better in the new trust system. But it's not perfect. The player driven uh dungeons and you know doing dungeons with your friends is always going to be better but if you play the dps like i did in stormblood and you get to those dungeon queues you don't want to wait 30 to 45 minutes it's just crazy how long you have to wait in those dungeon queues so this trust system hopefully will allow us to level up dps classes without waiting in queues forever that's just some of the stuff that's come out today there's so much information so much information. I highly recommend you check out. I have the subreddit thread, the Final Fantasy XIV subreddit thread, which has a great summary of everything in one spot. And there's a ton of influencers out there that, that have provided great information. But I like this one because it's consolidated and it's very well organized. And it's a lot of information. I'll put the link in the show description. Check it out, guys. Final Fantasy XIV Shadowbringers is coming. And there's a lot of information, a lot of changes, and a lot of good things which I think is going to make this a very, very cool launch. Let's hope we don't have a Raban EX or Raban Savage again, where the servers crash. <laughs> Let's hope we don't have what we had in Stormblood this time around. And for our final story, we're going to talk a little bit about Overwatch. The Overwatch League, which is their esports competitive league, their commissioner has resigned from Blizzard. And he is going to work for Epic Games on the Fortnite esports. This is big news. His name is Nate 
Nancer. Nancer. So why is this big news? Well, I don't know if you've been noticing, but Overwatch has been making big strides in the esports arena for quite some time. Just in the short time, they've been alive. Uh, Overwatch is a fairly young game compared to things like Dota, compared to things like uh, Counter-Strike, Call of Duty, big titles that of old, Halo. But Overwatch is making appearances on ESPN, like, like, like easily. ESPN2 on the main ESPN channel. Uh, there's commercials about it on TV. They have made big strides. They have gotten real sports commissioners and real sports executives on board to create these teams based on their cities, much like you see in real sports. They've got this massive arena out in California, and now they're moving a lot of their esports to different the different home cities so they can have home games. It's crazy how much they've done in a short amount of time. While everyone likes to hate on Overwatch and hate on uh, just to hate on Blizzard in general, they don't really have an idea what they're talking about. Because from a overall blunt perspective, Overwatch League has been killing it. There isn't another esports out there that's doing what they're doing. That includes StarCraft. That includes League of Legends. They're not doing what they're doing. Now, they may have the numbers. They may have more, more numbers in Overwatch League in a certain respect. But these guys are reaching out to media and teams and branding like no one else has ever done. No one else has ever done it like this. So to see the, the, the commissioner of this masterpiece resign is kind of a big deal. Here's his tweet. He says, hey, hey, Overwatch League family. Hey, I want to share that soon I will be leaving Blizzard for a new opportunity. This has been the toughest decision of my life because it means I won't get to work with the best staff, players, teams, owners, partners, and fans in esports anymore. I can't emphasize, <coughs> excuse me, I can't emphasize enough how proud I am of what we've all accomplished together. It has been an honor of my life to have been part of the team to help build the league of breakthrough. Burn Blue, he's got a bunch of uh, different hashtags here. Uh, he didn't say that he was going to Epic Games in this tweet, but the studio, his farewell tweets, but the studio confirmed to ESPN, which first broke the story. ESPN broke the story. Now, this, again, this is what I'm talking about, that he will be joining to work on competitive Fortnite. It's already one of the biggest esports around, according to PC Gamer. The Fortnite World Cup currently in the seventh week has a hundred million dollar prize pool. So he's moving up. He's not going down, but he's made great strides at Blizzard. And I think the Epic Games probably offered him twice or maybe three times what he makes now. He probably couldn't pass it up. Um, here's his parting remarks. I get way too much credit for the success of the Overwatch League. It's been awesome to be our public face, but too many overestimate my role in making the league great. It isn't about me. It's never been. It's all about you. That's why I'm confident that the league is in great hands. I can't wait to see where the team where the team takes the Overwatch League in 2020 and beyond, and I'll be cheering right there alongside you every step of the way. Congratulations, Nate Nazar, but I don't know what Blizzard's going to do. Like he said, he's he's not... <coughs> he shouldn't take credit for what, um, for what Overwatch League is does, doing, but... If Epic is going to take him away, he's doing something right. Check it out, guys. Over on PCGamer.com, they got the details. Nate Nanzer is leaving Overwatch League as his commissioner to go to Epic Games for the Fortnite competitive esports. And that concludes episode 138 of Game Chat. I want to thank you for listening. It was a short and sweet one, but uh, we got it done. I apologize for my sinuses. Just, I got this really massive post-nasal drip today. Uh, the seasons have changed. And uh, you probably, if you've been listening to my podcast, you probably know... I have several podcasts where I'm just like controlling a cough or trying to deal with nasal stuff. So thank you for listening and thank you for suffering through my suffering over here. Buona.tv slash podcast. That's where you should go to check out Tech Talk with Buona and B Rants, my other podcast, which are produced on Sunday and whenever. B Rants is produced whenever I think of something to rant about. Uh, we have, like I said, we have a new episode up there talking about Twitch money. Um, I got a couple more in the hopper. Check out my live stream. Buona.live is the URL you go to. Buona.live, which will redirect you to twitch.tv slash Buona. We stream every day except Wednesdays and Sundays from 3 p.m. to about 11 p.m. Except on Saturdays where we start at noon and we try to go to about 11 p.m., 10 p.m., 11 p.m. on that day as well. All times are Eastern. Check out my Instagram, instagram.com slash Buona, twitter.com slash Buona. And finally, my YouTube channel at YouTube. Dot com slash Buona. I'm kind of in a, in a crisis right now on that channel. 
I, I'm in a content drought. I don't know what to do videos on. Like I sat around for three hours one day and I couldn't think of anything to do. So kind of got a little bit of creator's block over there. But I'll get bit again. I, I, I was on a good streak for like a month or two. I was putting out a couple videos a week. But now I'm kind of... I, I think I, I see that... I see people are doing the same stuff and it demotivates me. When I first started my YouTube channel, nobody was doing what I was doing. And it was very motivating to do it. Like I was doing stuff that I didn't see anybody else do. But now it's like YouTube is so big. It's like people are doing stuff that you plan to do. And I, I just, I'm not motivated to do it if somebody else has already done it. I don't know. Something I got to get over. Because people are like, hey, boy, we'll watch whatever you do. And they're probably right. But thank you so much for listening to Game Chat with Buona episode two. I'm sorry, 138. I'll see you guys next week. Take care. Have a great week. Bye-bye.